Meu job, eu was here from Philadelphia. Stephanie Sika from Brooklyn. And Christy Jennifer Sagel from Boston. Stanila Piazui from Princess Charles from Brooklyn, New York. All right, so the theme of today's event is lead and be fruitful. I think it, it is only fitting that we, can, we should talk about the use of social media in this society. As this society is evolving, we need to find ways and tools to assimilate to the changes to our society. The internet has become both a blessing and a curse. Whether we are in favor of internet use or not, it is becoming a leading way to conduct business. Companies like Amazon, Alibaba, others are making it very difficult for brick and mortar stores to remain in business, the likes of Macy's, Toys R Us and such. As people are using the internet to pay their bills and doing their uh, online shopping, our young, the future leaders of our world, they're gonna have to take charge of what's happening with the use of the internet. Just a reminder that today's show is being broadcasted on cable vision and it will also be posted on YouTube. Facebook. And also Facebook. Hi. Radio Telesolidarity. All right. I just want to remind everybody that this is an interactive show. So I need the audience participation, which means that if you have a question, we're going to do it in an orderly fashion. You're going to raise your hand. And when I signal to you, you're going to come up front to ask your question or to make a comment if that's what you want to do. All right? All right, let's get, let's get started. How do you young people view the use of social media? Is it a good thing to have or is it bad? In my opinion, I feel like it depends on what you're using social media for. If you're using it for a pro, like building a business or building your brand or something like that, then I think that it's good and good to the, like to people out there. And um, but if you're a predator, for instance, and you're trying to prey on young children, I think it's a different thing and it's a con and it can endanger a lot of people. So that's just my point of view. I think the use of the internet can be pro and con, and I feel that we can use it in a positive way to spread love and positivity and help others who suffer from depression and other mental illnesses. So I think it could be a pro more than it could be a con. I believe that the internet is a great platform to have information, um, access to information. Um, even with the little, the vast that there are in the internet, I think that with all the goods that we can get from it, it's opened our eyes and opened up access to information for younger kids. Um, just like in fifth grade, I mean, I'm a, I'm a teacher in fifth grade special ed, and one of the ways that I'm able to even access different ways of teaching a child with like maybe dyslexia or dyscalculia or someone who just has a trouble reading or writing using those resources right then and there at my fingertips to be able to say okay so this method doesn't work let me try a different method or let me get in contact with a teacher at a different school using the internet and able to get that access of information even just during school or even during my work hours it's it's a great thing I think social media is great because it lets us check up on our friends, family, even though we can't always be there for them in person, we can be there for them online. 
So that's my view. So it helps us to remain connected with our loved ones and our friends. In terms of being the future leaders of this society, you're going to probably be in politics. Uh, you're going to become entrepreneurs. Um, you're going to go into education, whatever the field may be. How can we use social media as a way to get ahead, to do like a self-branding? Um, to use social media to promote yourself, personally speaking, I've been an entrepreneur since I was like um, 17. Um, I do here. I, I go to cosmetology school. And in order for me to gain more clients, I show my work. So anytime I would have a client, I would post my work and, you know, I would get random hit-ups from people from all groups, races, and they would ask me, okay, this is what I want, etc. And I have people who are upcoming stylists, they would ask me advice on how to, like, start a business, how to get in the field, should they go to school, should they not, or, you know, like, learn from other hairstylists and to, like, grow your clientele. Um, so the good thing about the internet is that, well, the good and bad thing about the internet is that you don't have to travel, right? So all you have to do is get on Google or get on Instagram or get on Facebook, and you're going to find everything that you need. What I realized that this youth does, and I see it's um, spreading out onto like the adults also, is we use Instagram, right? And Instagram is not just for fun anymore, but it's a business tool. So you see a lot of people growing on social media and they're getting these likes and these hashtags are coming in. And a lot of us don't even realize that we're business, we're, we're in business and we don't even realize it, right? So something so simple as posting a picture of nature, right? And we're just taking it on our phones or whatever. That can reach to like 5,000 other people, you're getting these likes, and what happens is Instagram sees that, they contact you, and now you're a social media influencer, and you're making money off of that, right? So, social media has been an immensely a great tool for a lot of us in terms of entrepreneurship, because a lot of us, we don't, like I said, we don't realize that we're entrepreneurs, and it's teaching us these skills, and we have, we've now grown this foundation that we didn't have before. In the most recent past, Facebook was sanctioned for selling users' information to a third party to influence a major election. In your opinion, do you think there should be limitations or restrictions to using social media and how easy our information should be accessed? And should they have that right in the first place? that um, they should work on securing our information on social media because some sites, they ask you to put in like your personal information, especially if you're shopping online. And you guys might not notice, but when you go on a um, website, they ask you do you agree or accept before you go on the next page. And most of us, we don't read what it says. And a lot of times it is saying that they're able to use your information and do certain things. So I think that they should make it clearer what they're doing to us. We just click accept because we don't want to read the whole thing to download an app or buy an item. But I think that they should really work on that and make it clear to know exactly what we're doing and who can see our information. Um, here's my thing. I'm a pretty realistic person. So I feel like it's the internet, right? You're gonna have People are going to have access to everything that you do. The reason why you're able to communicate with somebody who's in Paris is because they have to have certain information in order for this to happen. The issue isn't what these businesses aren't telling us, it's what we're not seeking. We need to start reading. We need to start paying attention to what we post online. You know what I'm saying? Like Something that my mother always told me was, you don't need to post the location that you're at. Because people are getting access to these things. It's easy, they track you down and then boom, they find you. So we need to be aware of what we're posting. We need to read these contracts and these terms and conditions that they're posting. They don't post it for, for no reason, right? And one of the, the biggest ways that they know that they trap us is because they know that we're not gonna read it. 
So when they let out information that they're not supposed to let, they're supposedly not supposed to let out, we get upset. But they said that they can do this, but we didn't want to read it, so now we're screwed and we're upset. So I think what we really need to do is we need to learn how to read, we need to take time and read, because once you get on the internet, your privacy is no longer your privacy, it's for the public. Um, one thing I learned about the internet is that, as she said, nothing is private. You signed up for something, you have to deal with the consequences. Like for example, you sending pictures so, so and so, you may think it might not go out in the open, but let someone hack into your account, that picture will get leaked, and what happens? If for example, you apply to college, Colleges will see that picture. You may think they will not be able to get access to it. You can Google your name right now. Most of your accounts will pop up. You'll be like, how did I get there? Guess what? There's people monitoring everything that you're doing. Everyone has an iPhone, an Android, whatever. You have a camera on it. You may think someone is not looking at you. Trust me, they are. You have to be mindful of what you do and how you do things, what you post and what you don't post and how you use your words because you can say something, you don't know how it might affect the next person, or you may post something or have access to somebody's pictures and stuff like that. You never know if it's gonna slip out in the public and what happened, you get blamed. So don't act shocked when you do certain things and you expect it not to like, you know, get exposed at the end. Going off of like, when she said, that your information is out there and st stop signing up for things. It's just like, we're okay with it when we find a friend that we haven't talked to 10 years ago, right? Like, you go on Facebook and you went to his friend, you went to school with Cassandra in the fifth grade, and now you're in 10th grade, and you never, you haven't seen Cassandra since high school, I mean, since middle school. Now you wanna be friends with her, but then come, you know, Joe from back when, it says, hey, I want to be friends. You're like, ew, like, why is Facebook suggesting this to me? I never, like, asked for this. But you was okay when fifth grade Cassandra requested friends with you, right? So all I'm saying is every time you sign up and you say, okay, this is a good, you have to think of both sides of the coin. Like, it's not all good and all bad with Facebook. There shouldn't, I don't think you need more laws to prevent someone from accessing your information. If you don't want your neighbor next door to know about the situation, then don't put it on the internet. That's all it is. Cause like if you're if you're mad that Sandra saw your post because you left it private before you, because you thought it was private, even though you pressed the private uh, feature on there, but you didn't know that private only means friends of friends only. Like that's on you. You have to re you have to go to those settings. If you don't know how to fix your settings, then you go to, you Google that. It's all about that. That's why the information is there, the access is there. We don't need more laws. If we get more laws on the internet to control what we put and what we need to see, then we become China. Yes. What do you mean by that last statement, we become China? A communist country. A place where the government controls the information and the access you have. I just watched an episode of about about access of information on um, on Netflix. It was I forgot his name, Azim Asari or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Anyways, so yeah, so it's like in China, you talk about one thing. They're looking. You can search monkey jumping up and down on YouTube right now here in America. You find monkeys jumping up and down related. Find a monkey getting mistreated by, I don't know, Donald Trump or something. But say, right here, right now, we decided Donald Trump can have any say of what we get in contact with, right? Now, that monkey being mistreated by Donald Trump, we no longer see it. So all we see is what the government wants to see. So the government is good, the government is great, the government is our God. Do you understand where I'm coming from right there? Thank you. Somebody agrees. Would you like to comment? On camera? Okay, so speaking of the government, recently there were changes made to how we use the internet. 
Do you think that's fair for our government to control what we do in limiting our freedom, basically? They can't limit our freedom, but also you have to realize that sometimes they use the government itself, not other people, use our information the wrong way. Like, even the people of power, I'm talking about people of power, they use it in the wrong way and they, they spread it to other countries and stuff like that. So I'm not telling them to limit us or what we can do, what we can see. No, that's not fair. That's, that wouldn't be America. But they sh we should see that people in power are abusing the internet also. It's not just us not knowing they are abusing like the power. So. I think it's not, it's not that they're limiting our freedom. We, we, we have free will for a reason. As long as we have free will, we do have the freedom to do things. Someone telling us we can't do something doesn't stop us from doing it. If you tell me I can't jump off the stage, that doesn't stop me from being capable of jumping off that stage. You telling me that I can't go on Facebook doesn't stop me from saying Facebook.com, enter. And what you stop is the access to Facebook. So, if I want an information, I can always get it. There is a country where they're stopping you from saying free this one guy who got arrested, this American guy who got arrested in that country, and he, was, he, was, he wasn't allowed to say or say anything bad anymore. We weren't allowed, the country wasn't even allowed to protest it online. So how, what they do? They all dressed up as him, but there was, it was a blind man, they, put, they dressed up as him, and guess what, they lost him. They, put, they posted up pictures of him, the blind man. They posted pictures of him, they didn't put his name, they didn't say what he was, they didn't say where he was, they didn't say nothing, they didn't say hashtag nothing, but they still posted pictures of him. Two weeks later, he got lost. How you lose a blind man? In my opinion, I feel like it shouldn't happen because we do live in a state of democracy, and we have laws that protect our, what we have, like with our um, freedom of speech and what we put out and stuff like that. So for the government to go ahead and do that, I think that um, it's against the laws, essentially, because we have laws that protect us and our freedom. Um, so no, I don't think that, in my opinion, that the government should be limiting what we put on there. Some, some things are not their business, but, and they interfere, and I don't think that it's Um, for example, China is a communist country and the people are limited on using the web. For example, like um, news, news companies, they cannot post or advertise or say anything that is against their government because if they do, that company will get shut down. Um, over here, we have the freedom to do what we want, really. We may think that we don't, but trust me, we get away with a lot of things that other countries cannot get away with. So, you know, the laws that we have right now are good because compared to China, you cannot really go on Facebook. You cannot really see everything that, you know, usually would see on Facebook. Instagram, especially now that they're advertising a lot of sexual content, like, you cannot see that in China. So, yeah, we, we really have freedom over here more than we do over there, because bio, 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 bio. <laughs> um, So, I know that you guys are aware of the whole Black Lives Matter movement, right? And if you guys do pay any attention, you realize that what made the Black Lives Matter movement Black Lives Matter movement, what made it so prominent was social media, right? Now, what happens when you stand up for yourself and you speak up against the things that are not the norms? People will shut you down. People will close your mouth. You are not allowed to say these things. So what does the government do, or these businesses do? They take down the information, right? So, for example, the video of, um, I think it really it really started popping out to me when Trayvon Martin got shot in 2012, I believe. Yeah, and the video 
went around. And what they did was they wiped it out from the internet. So again, I don't, I'm a pretty realistic person and when it comes to the government and how the world operates, this is my model. Be aware of what you do and how you do it. Be aware of the place that you are in. They, when you be careful of what you post. If you post something that is controversial, you will pay the consequence. And it's not to say that because it's controversial that you shouldn't post it. Stand up for what you believe in, but be prepared to be attacked, okay? Because anything that is against the law or anything that is against what this country represents, you are considered a minority. You are considered nothing. You are, con you are, you are practically limited in everything that you do or that you post. And a lot of people don't realize that. So while we speak on, you know, we have free will, yeah, compared to other countries, but don't push your luck either. Don't push your luck either because they're after you and they're watching you and they're paying attention to what you're posting and they're going to monitor you. This is what it comes with with being on the internet and being on social media. One more thing. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of the dark web, like around the December of last year, a lot of youth were getting access to this thing called the dark web. And mostly that is used by CIA agents or um, disguised murderers. Like people would pay people to like, you know, kill people or you would find videos of actual crimes, unsolved murder cases like they have the black market on there, they're doing organ trafficking, and a lot of youth, they're always complaining, oh, I can't do this, that, or the third on the internet, when there are worse things being done on the internet. And I feel like the government should really, you know, shut that thing down, because once the kids get exposed to that, we're gonna lose them completely, because now we have a lot of youth that are involved in gang activities. You don't know what they would do on that type of dark web. Um, a lot of scamming is going on. People are going bankrupt, and you wonder why, because of that. Um, kids are getting um, kidnapped and disappearing, here, and you don't know where they are. All of that information is on that dark web. Everyone is busy worrying about you know, things that are not relevant, where there are real problems that are being, they're, they're happening, and we just don't know, because we are not knowledgeable of what is really going on. We're worried about, you know, ignorance, um, Cardi B versus Nikki, all these dumb stuff that are not benefiting us. Our people are suffering, and we're not like really solving any pro solving the issue. We're busy getting mixed up in other people's drama. And we should be dealing with real stuff. Educate yourself about, you know, how does one start investing? How does one um, exactly stock, like a lot of kids, they don't know about stocks. In high school, I was um, fortunate enough to have economics class and now I'm investing into like Apple, Siri and stuff like that. We're over here, just no, 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 I don't recall who made the statement about our freedom. However, Jesus died so we could live free and to have an abundant life. So if we if we feel passionate about an issue, and let's take for example Colin Kaepernick. He suffered a lot of persecution for that. But in the end, what happened? He's getting rewarded because he stayed true to himself. I believe if you truly are passionate about something, and as long as you're, you know, whatever you're doing that doesn't cross the boundaries and it, it, it's legal, it's not disrespectful, then you should not be scared. You should never be scared because you don't know if the Holy Spirit is not putting that in your heart to be the one who's gonna be the next Martin Luther King or the next, um, what's his name, the, the other senator, or Obama, who knows? You don't know. So 
So that was my opinion. All right, so let's talk about the consequences of posting lewd comments and pictures on social media and the, and the ramifications that those things might have later on when you guys become professionals. Um, posting nude pictures is not really like you should ever do it because it always ends up backfiring. You, there's no real gain from it, so there's no purpose in doing it. When you get into your professional career, um, what's it called? It prevents you from progressing. You're not allowed to do all that stuff that you wanted to do all because of something you did back in high school. And now it's on the internet and you can't get rid of it. That's just my input on it. I mean, I said this already. It's like, if you don't want your neighbor to see it, then you shouldn't put it up there. You, whatever you think that, your phone. How many people have iPhones? How many people have Androids? How many people, <laughs> how many people have a drive like where their phone automatically uploads and you got it on there right iCloud Google Drive backups all, you all got that right so think about this every time you take a picture it automatically uploads to the cloud you take that nude it automatically uploads to the cloud oh I'm just gonna send it to the bay right I'm gonna send it to the bay you 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 put that trust in the bay to never ask, to never send it to his boys. Oh, oh, he's not gonna show it. It's just for him. All this other stuff, right? That picture on the cloud, right? Someone searches your name, either on the dark web or on the regular internet. That picture is gonna come up some way, somehow. Right then and there, it could be a year later. It could be ten years later. That. That one picture is gonna mess up your career. Do you know, I mean, think about it on the celebrity tip. One, only one for me, let's not talk about in Kardashian. We're not gonna talk about her. She's not, she really not. But talk about all those other people that we look up to and their careers have messed up because of one thing that they may have tweeted, they may have retweeted, hashtag, posted up on there. And their, their public eyes, like, you're saying, they have like 30,000 followers, millions of people, and they're like, oh, I can't believe she did this, or oh, stay strong, girl, hashtag me too, all that stuff. But then, when it comes to you personally, and you, get, you go to a job interview, and they look at your name, and they say, thank you, had a great interview, you feel great, you know you're about to get this job, and they send you a, thank you for, um, thank you for coming in here, I'm sorry we went a different way. How does that feel? Feel like a failure that's the problem every little thing that you do every little thing that you may like you may see you whatever you comment there are jobs that won't let you have a social media there are jobs that won't let you even comment on a social media account because they don't want their company they don't want their face of the company to look like something like that they want you to be extra careful so don't, whenever you post something up or send someone a picture or whatever it is, be careful, be mindful. It's like 10 years from, 10 years from now, am I going to still have the same view? 10 years from now, is it going to affect me the same way? That's what you got to think about. Um, could you please repeat the question? Oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the next question because we're running out of time. Um, I would like to personally know why you millennials are so addicted to social media. I would like to know personally. Take it short, please. A lot of us are addicted to social media because it is like a drug. Studies have show, shown that social media is becoming like you're becoming a drug addict using it. You constantly want to check it. You constantly want to see what's on it. Your brain is like trained with a cell phone. You can't live without one. You can live without one, but social media is making it really hard. And we need to be careful with that. Because let's say just one day, all our cell phones shut off. Can we live? Like, can we survive? Do we know how to use a map? Do we know how to 
how to navigate without cell phones. And I think that the youth should really look at that and see that it's a, it is an addiction and we should really be careful on using social media. I was going to say that um, I definitely think because I think we're so addicted because it's a trend. I feel like every generation has their trend and their wave, as we call it. Um, so social media is just addictive because it's just our thing. Like, 80s has to hammer pants, we have social media. And that's it. Um, I think the, the big issue with the social media is the access. It's right there. We use. Ten years ago, we only had with what our computer, the desktop, the monitor. We had to wait that. You had to wait for your mom to get off the phone with Haiti, so she can get, so you can get on the internet, so you can search or play an internet game. It's hard. It's easier now to just be like, boom, the news right there, Twitter's right there, my friends right there. I'm able to like call somebody just that. It's the instant gratification. It's the instant access, and that's why I think for it, it's it's addictive. Social media posts, you can think of something now while you're young that it's okay to post it. And a few years later, you live to regret it. Knowing that employers do check social media posts, how can we discourage members of our audience, your friends, to not use it the way it wasn't intended to, to be used? What advice can we give the young people? We can tell the young people to spread love and positivity. So instead of posting that really cute picture, like you can post a picture of yourself, but have a positive message. Like post a picture of you helping the homeless. Post a picture of you um, doing something good for the community so other people can see it and be like, oh, that's the new thing. Let's help the community. So what you post, everybody starts doing. Like a dance, everybody starts doing that dance. Like we should start doing positive things and making it a trend, that's what I think. So I hear you guys specifically talking about jobs. Um, I hope you all are listening to, especially you kids who are applying to high schools or colleges. When you, um, especially for um, senior, seniors in high school, when you get on Common App, there's this thing that says, would you like to show your Instagram or your uh, social media or whatever? Do you want to attach your business to your application so these schools can look into it? So before it was just jobs, right? So you post it when you're 15, when you're 25, you apply to an accountant firm or something and you think that you're safe. No, even at the age of 18, these schools are getting onto your social media and when they see these things that are probably derogatory or that doesn't fit the image that their university needs, they're not going to accept you. I had a friend who was applying to um, a really good HBCU, which is a historically black college, which I hope you all look into. And um, she said that the interviewer was like, oh, so I saw that you have an Instagram. And she's sitting there, she's like, Instagram, what? How do you, how you know that I have an Instagram? And she goes, yeah. And the interview goes, yeah, I saw that you posted blah, 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 blah at this time and on this date. Why? And she forgot about that post. She didn't even realize that that post was still up. That's how much anything that you do is going to come back to you. So now going back to the question, use social media, not even just social media, the internet, as an advantage. The same way that you can get up, like, like she was saying, the same way that you can get up and you can post negativity, post positivity also. People are seeing this stuff. People are influenced by social media because it's so easy access. Whatever that you post, whatever picture that you, that you put up, whatever that you say, people read that, it rubs off on them, and then that's how they decide to go on about their day. That's the power of communication. And that's the power of energy and all that stuff. So yeah, just post positive things. Pay attention to what you're posting. Stop posting things out of ignorance. It's always gonna come back to you. It's always gonna slap you back in the face, so yeah. This is gonna be our last question. And I want every single one of you to give our audience a piece of advice on how we can actually make the internet a safer place because we have people who are using it and they are not who they say they are and we 
have criminals um, that are attracting the young and naive using the um, internet or social media. So what piece of advice do you have? Or what are, like give, give ideas of how we can make the internet a safer place? Well, as a user, you should never give out like where you live, what city you're from. You should never try and meet up with someone you haven't met in person before. Yeah. Um, one way to make it safe is to educate them as soon as um, they can read. Uh, we, we use technology in my school a lot with the kids. We teach them how to use the Google platform a lot. And we don't just teach them, oh, you click here, you click there. We teach them why we do, we, why we do it, what's the good parts of it, what's the bad parts of Google, um, how can we use it better, how, how can we make it better, how can we make it a good platform for them to use, how, how to use it professionally, how to use it for fun. Those are things you have to educate them while they're young, while, they can, while they're starting to read, while they are just now accessing all that information because they need to educate themselves and we need to continue to educate ourselves with what's, the new, what's new in it also. Um, I think like the saying, what goes around comes around. So if you spread positivity and you use the internet as a positive thing, positive things will come back to you. And that's something that you guys should have in your mind. You do positive and positive will happen to you. You put out negative and that's what you will get. So yeah. um, for me, um, I think just be careful who you talk to and who you add and just be careful what you post on social media. That's just my advice. Stop being lazy. That's, that's my advice. Stop being lazy, okay? Um, I think we became so addicted to texting that we no longer have like face-to-face -face conversations and all of these things, FaceTime and all this other stuff, like no, get up, go take a walk and get to know the person instead of being so quick to just jump on the bandwagon of the people that we see on social media. And another thing, people hide behind computers. A lot of y'all talk some big talk online, but in person y'all really not like that. Y'all, it's kind of slow, okay? So, so this, this again is to say that y'all hide, uh, hide behind social media, y'all hide behind the internet. Get out, go talk to somebody, and then boom, that's how you make it the same thing. All right, my advice is not for the kids, it's more for the adults because I mean, okay, for so both, really, but I really want to like say for the adults because. As I was growing up, I was not mindful about the internet and what it can do to you. Um, parang yo, pomposyo ang tibon yo because nupa jump kwa niki sa fasu telephone yo, akim mo yo ye kote ya poste photo yo video yo because a lot of kids they're going missing. This thing is real yo. Like organ trafficking is real. I had so many friends from high school that disappeared, literally literally disappeared and parents still haven't found they're not being posted on the news you know cops aren't really helping as we want them to help so please watch what your kids are posting and ask them like if they're going through anything like be open with them because we a lot of Haitian parents they're like a little tough on the kids and the kids are scared to talk to them so be more because if I see you, keep going, keep going, you keep going, you know me? So, yeah, I'm done. Thank you for that. All right, this concludes our show. Our panelists were Stephanie, Fred, Mia Jack, Christy, and Princess. Thank you very much, guys.